How important image processing is, is one of those questions that has a different answer for every person that you ask. It's a very personal thing, how much editing we apply to the images that we make. But if you're shooting raw images, then for sure you're doing at least a little bit of editing, even if it's just tweaks of contrast and white balance adjustments. Now I'm a landscape photographer and my philosophy has always been that I want my images to portray the way that the scene made me feel. So all of the decisions that I make from the lens choice, the, uh, the composition, the exposure decisions, all of those are towards that end. And image editing is a big part of that for me because that's where you take everything that you did in the field and attempt to get the best out of it, to get your image looking like the scene that you had in your head, the scene the way that you remember it. But at the same time, I don't really want to spend hours of my life in front of a computer editing. It's not something that I really enjoy. So I want my editing to be as efficient and streamlined as possible. So when Luminar contacted me and asked me if I'd be interested in testing out the Neo software, there are a couple of things about it that really intrigued me. The first is that it actually works as a plugin to Lightroom. So all of my images that I've taken over the 15 years that I've been a professional photographer are stored in huge uh, Lightroom catalog, so I'm kind of reluctant to change that. So it's really nice to have software that I can use as a plugin to Lightroom and continue using the Lightroom catalog. The other thing is that it now has a focus stacking module, which is something that's becoming more and more important to me as I shoot medium format. Focus stacking is a pretty tedious procedure. And while there is software that does that already, I was really curious to see the way Luminar Neo handled it. So over the years, I've developed techniques to get my processing as streamlined and efficient as possible. So I was curious with Luminar Neo how quickly I could get my images looking just the way that I wanted them to. Now, I'm gonna be opening the images from, from within Lightroom and using the Luminar Neo plugin. Now, in terms of the difference between the plugin and the standalone Luminar Neo, well, basically, if you're using the standalone, then you're doing all of your editing on directly onto the raw file. So, of course, it is non-destructive. If you're opening the image from Lightroom, it's gonna create a TIFF pretty much in the same way that it would if you're opening an image into Photoshop from Lightroom. And then you're gonna be editing that TIFF in Luminar Neo. So to open it up, we basically just right click, edit in, and then go to Luminar Neo here. You can see it's just gonna edit, copy with Lightroom adjustments, and then open the image up in Luminar. And you can see here that the image has opened in Luminar. Now, whether you're using the standalone or the plugin as I'm doing here, this, uh, this user interface is always gonna look the same. Now it opens onto the presets page. I don't really use presets. So I'm just gonna click over here onto the editing side. And straight away, you can see here, these are all the tools that you've got on the right hand side. And these are split into different groups. The biggest ones are here, the essentials. And in here, you'll find most of the kind of adjustments tools that you're used to seeing in, in, in most uh, raw editing software, things for adjusting contrast and color, sharpening, noise, things like that. And then down here, we've got some more creative tools, which I'll be having a look at later on. Uh, we've got portrait tools and then at the bottom here we've got a few professional tools. Now the first thing that I want to do to any image is to try to get the, the contrast right, to get the levels of luminosity right because this is a raw file and it looks a little bit flat. So I'm going to go here to the develop panel and then go straight down to curves. Curves is a really powerful tool for editing and for applying contrast. You can see we've got the histogram here with the highlights on the right, shadows on the left. So if we push this line up we actually brighten the highlights. And then if we come to the shadow side and we come down, we darken the shadows. And already you can see that's had a significant effect. We can see the effect that we're having here by just clicking on this eye and off again. And you can see that's just applied quite a bit of contrast. And I'm gonna use this tool here as well, the smart contrast, just apply that. Now this basically applies contrast without touching either side of the histogram, without touching the brightest highlights or the darkest shadows just in the mid tones and that should really make the image pop quite a bit again if we just turn off and then on a little bit and already that's had a significant effect on the image now the foreground here is a little bit dark so i'm going to go down to the creative tools and use this tool here relight now this is a really powerful tool that i've been very impressed with in luminar what it basically lets you do is apply light to parts of the image that weren't particularly well lit when you when you shot it. So if I increase the brightness near, what you'll see is the foreground of that is gonna get brighter. It's got in a little bit of a jump there. 
and then I can adjust how deep I want that to go into the image. You can see the line changing there. I'm going to have to actually apply it a little bit far as well. So if we if we turn that off and on, you can see the effect that that's having just lighting up the foreground there. But I think what I also want to do is apply a little bit of contrast into this area of the waves in the foreground. So I'm going to go back up to the develop panel here and choose another instance of develop. But this time I'm going to mask it. So I'm going to click over here on masking and choose linear gradient and then just pull a linear gradient up from the bottom here. Now, the distance between these three lines is how much feathering you're going to have on the adjustment. And that's how much, how, how big the gap's going to be between here where the adjustment starts and here where the adjustment ends. So here we can make a very hard line or here we can just softly feather the adjustment out. Everything that's red is what's going to be, uh, is what the adjustment is going to apply to. Now, because I'm working with a relatively hard um, horizon line there, I'm just going to just put it like that and just tweak it a little bit and that should be fine. And then go back to the adjustments here and I'm just going to apply some smart contrast to the, uh, to the foreground. Now that's applying contrast there, but it's also brightening a little bit because the highlights are being pushed. So I'm just going to pull the highlights down and you can see the effect of that adjustment off and on again. It's quite subtle, but it's given the foreground just a little bit more pop. Now what I'd like to do is go down to apply a little bit more contrast. I'm going to go all the way down to the professional tools here to a tool called Super Contrast, which is another thing that I really do like about Luminar is it allows me to target specific luminosity values and apply contrast just there. Now Lightroom doesn't really have a tool which allows me to just target the midtones. If I want to do that, I have to use luminosity masks in Photoshop. But this tool here will allow me to put contrast just in the midtones. Now, when you pull the slider there, you don't really see much difference. It's only when you when you turn it on and off, you see the effect that it's having. And uh, that's just giving the image quite a bit of pop overall. So I'm quite happy with, with, with how the image is going. But what's happening is that the more I apply contrast, the more it's also applying saturation. If we go over to the split tool here, if we click on this, then we get a slider which allows us to see the image at the start and then with all the adjustments that we've made. And the sky here is starting to get a little bit more saturated. Now, I don't really like blue, blue skies. I think it's very distracting. It pulls the eye towards a little bit. So I'm going to go down here towards the color harmony and just reduce the brilliance a little bit, which will desaturate the image globally. But what I'd also like to do is just target those blues. So I'm going to go up to the color panel here and the essentials. Click that. Now, what I really want is to target a specific color. So I can do that here with HSL. This is hue, saturation, and luminosity. You can see all the different colors here. And I just want to select saturation and then the blues and desaturate the blues in the sky a little bit. You can see the effect over there. But as I'm desaturating, I'm also making the sky a little bit bright. So I'm just gonna click down and go to luminance and then click on the blues. And this time, pull that down just to darken the blue a little bit, something like that. So you can see that's what I've done there to the sky. Just made a little bit more saturated and I put a tonal value in the sky, a color in the sky that I find a little bit more pleasing. Now the image is almost finished. There's a few things that need working on. There's the highlights over here are quite bright, but I'm going to leave those to the end because before I do that, I want to apply some glow to the image. Now the glow tool is down here in the creative panel. So if we click on glow, we have different ways of making the image glow. Uh, and I'm going to choose the Orton effect. Now the Orton effect is a, is a technique that's been a, around in photography and landscape photography since the film days. And it just gives the highlights a bit of glow. It makes the whole image feel a little bit more ethereal. So if you apply too much, you can see here everything just goes a little bit soft and it's just too much. So the Orton effect is something that should only ever be applied in, in just very, very low amounts because you're basically blurring a little bit the image there. So just something like that. And you can see that the image has got a really nice glow about it now, but it has pushed the highlights. So I'm going to go back up to the develop panel now and then just pull down on those highlights here in the sky 
and that's just going to put a little bit more detail in here and give the image a better balance in terms of the luminance overall. So looking at the image overall, I think that's pretty much it. I'm quite happy with that. If we look over here, if we click on edits, we can see basically a history of all the edits that we've done to the image and we can click on, on any one of these, go back and make more adjustments again. But overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I don't think it needs anything else. And it's very quick and very intuitive to use these tools to get the image to looking to it to, to a point where I'm quite happy with it. So all I've got to do now is just click on apply and it's going to save the image back in Lightroom. And the image is saved here back in Lightroom in a stack next to the original RAW. So the image that is saved in Lightroom is a TIFF and the adjustments on that are locked. So even if you open that back up again in Luminar Neo, you're not going to be able to make small readjustments to those adjustments that you made. They're already locked into the file. So that's an advantage of using Luminar as a standalone because you can open the RAW file at any time and you can still see all of the adjustments that you made. Now, one thing that I'm very curious to test is the AI focus blending because focus blending is generally quite a pain. Now, as I've said before, there is software that does that, but I'd really like to have a look at Luminar's solution. Now, you can actually use the plugin version of Luminar to blend images. Basically, you just select the images that you want to blend, right click, but instead of going to edit in, you actually go to export and then you can see here the different export options and you adjust choose focus stacking in Luminar Neo. But what I'd actually like to do is do that in the standalone version of Luminar. So let's just flick over to Luminar here and you can see this is a standalone version. It looks very similar except we just have this separate catalog tab up here. And on the right here, some of the separate extensions. So if we click on, these are the two images here that I want to focus stack. So let's just select this one and zoom in. And you can see in this image, the, uh, the foreground looks to be out of focus, but the, uh, the background here in this room, that's all in focus. Whereas if we go to the second image, if we go here, then the background room, is not in focus there, but the foreground sand down here is actually in focus and nice and sharp. So you can see all the details there. So all I want to do is just basically focus blend those two together. So I just select them both and then drag them over here to the focus stacking panel and it will drop them in and then just click on stack. And you can see here that it's given me a, a tiff of the two images stacked together. So let's have a look and see what kind of job it's made of that. So here, when we look at the foreground, we see that the, the sand right close to the camera is nice and sharp and the doorway here. And then as we go all the way through to the back of the image, it's sharp all the way through and in focus all the way through to the back. So it's made really quite a nice job of blending those two images together. And that's something that I can see myself using quite a lot in the future. And there's also a panorama stitching tool, which works in the same way. We just select the images that we want to stitch. So we'll just choose these four here, drag them over into the pano stitching panel and then click start. And you can see that's made a really nice job of stitching those four images together. Some of the tools that I wanted to have a look at are up here in the extensions panel. You've got noiseless, super sharp and magic light. Now magic light is basically just for enhancing uh, artificial light, which doesn't really help me as a landscape photographer, but certainly the super sharp and the noiseless, these are AI tools, very similar to what you'll find from software of the likes produced by Topaz. Now this is an image that I shot in Tuscany. It was very windy and it shot with a telephoto lens. So there's a little bit of movement blur. The details, if you look in the trees, all of the fine details here are a little bit smeared. And I'm just curious what the Super Sharp tool can do with that. So we just click on it there, go to universal because we don't want to, to do motion blur and then just click on high. Now, because it's an AI tool, it's going to take quite a bit of time analyzing the whole image before I get the finished uh, output. So I'm just going to speed the video up while it does that. Okay, so it's finished. Let's have a look at what we've got here. So that does already look a lot sharper. If we just turn that off, you can see that's what it looked like before with most of the details, particularly in the trees there at the back and around this farmhouse, just a little bit smeared and just yeah, 
it just pops a little bit more. There's just a little bit more detail. I think if we look at this bank of trees over the back there, we can start to see. I don't know how much of that's going to come through on the video because obviously this video is going to have been uh, compressed um, for YouTube. But looking at the screen here, there really is a fair bit of difference in just the amount of detail that that's bringing out. And for an image that was a little bit smeared and had a little bit of shake in it, that does look really very nice. And now let's have a look at the noise list, the AID noise tool. So this is an Aurora shot from earlier this year, shot at about ISO 1600 or ISO 2000, something like that, about 13 seconds. When we look into the sky here, we can see it's, it's relatively clean, um, but there is still quite a bit of noise here in the sky. So let's see how the noiseless tool deals with that. Okay, so it's recommending that I use middle here. So I'm just gonna click on middle. And that is really, really, really clean. Let's just turn that off. There you can see the noise again and on. And that's very, very nice. Now, the key with noise reduction is how much, whether it smears the details or not. So this is the mountain here and the trees. Uh, let's turn it off. And it's not really done any smearing of the existing detail. I mean, this is zoomed in to 100% of the image. And you can see here that the detail in the mountain hasn't really been touched. It's only the noise in the sky. But there are still more additional controls here if we, if we are unhappy with it, that we can refine it, we can increase the details and the sharpness or decrease that. So if you do find that it actually has um, smeared any details whatsoever, you can kind of play around with these sliders. But overall, just from one click, that's really not bad at all. That's a very, very, very clean, uh, clean image. So overall then, for the kind of editing that I do, Luminar Neo is pretty intuitive and pretty fast to get the results that I want from my images. Now, there are a lot of other tools in Luminar Neo that I've not really touched on, things like sky replacement, things like sun stars, but I don't really use tools like that in my editing. But for the kind of editing that I do, which is just basic contrast and color work, it is very efficient and very fast. And tools like the Relight, the Super Contrast, as well as things like the Sharpening, the Denoise, and the Focus Stacking are really, really excellent. So for sure, it's definitely something that I'm going to be using in my workflow in the future. And I think that's pretty much it for this video. I hope it's been useful and I hope it's been interesting. So if you've got any questions, any comments, just drop them in the box below or send me an email and I'll get back to you. And as ever, good luck with all of your photography and take care. See you next time.